Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to write component tests with Cypress 10. And we'll be testing a simple component that allows our users to sign up for our email newsletter. And we'll be covering some of the basics of component testing in this video, but we'll also get into some more advanced techniques, like how to mock an API using the intercept command within our component. So now let's take a look at our application and the component we're going to test. The application we are using in this video is a course app built with Next.js. In the Hero section of our homepage is the email subscribe component we are going to test. Now that we've seen some of the functionality of this component, let's write some tests for it. I am going to create a new component test file and place it right next to the actual component. Next, I'm going to create the describe block. Within the describe block, I'll create an it block, which is our component test. The first thing we need to do when writing a component test is to mount the component within our test. Before we can do that though, we need to first import it. Now that we've imported our component, we can mount it using the sci.mount command. Now let's run this test to make sure everything is working properly. It looks like our test is passing and our component has mounted successfully, but the component does not have any styles. Let's discuss why this is happening. Hey, so I want to just take a minute to discuss what's going on and why our component does not have any styles. It's really important that you understand that Cypress component testing is very different from other tools and frameworks. Cypress is running your components and your tests inside of a real browser. Most testing tools and frameworks are running your components just in the terminal in like a headless UI environment, where essentially you're just seeing text output on the page. And they're using things like JS DOM. We're actually using a real browser. Now what this means, however, is that in order for Cypress to have access to your style sheets from your application, you have to import them into Cypress. Now the reason why you have to do this is because if you've used Cypress in the past as an end-to-end -end testing tool, Typically, you would have your, uh, your application running on a local dev server. Then you'd have Cypress running in a completely different terminal. You would say sci.visit, Cypress would visit that application, and it would test all the DOM elements and all of your assertions within your app. In component testing, things are very different. You don't actually have a local dev server running your entire application. You're only running Cypress because Cypress in version 10 has a dev server built into it that is responsible for mounting and rendering your component in the browser. So because Cypress is mounting your component, it's isolated from the rest of your application. So that means that you need to import your style sheets from your app into Cypress in order for your component to have access to them. So in the case of this application, I'm using Tailwind CSS. So I have to import Tailwind from my app into Cypress in the support file. So that way when it renders my component, my component will have access to all of Tailwind's classes. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. I know it's a little bit confusing at first, but once we jump back into VS Code, I think things will become more clear once I show you how to import and wire everything up. Within our component support file, we are going to need to import Tailwind CSS. You can find this file under the Cypress support component.ts or JS. By adding this import on line 25, we are telling Cypress to load the tailwind.css file from the main tailwind CSS folder in no modules. Now that we have tailwind being imported, let's run our test again to see our style component. Now that our component looks correct, I'm going to add a simple assertion that asserts that the placeholder text of the input field is correct. Now let's rerun our test to confirm everything is passing. Great, our test is passing. Now let's write a test that ensures a user is able to subscribe to our newsletter. I have gone ahead and created a new test and I'm mounting the subscribe component. Notice also that I'm using dot only so that only this test will run. Next, we need to get the input field so that we can type in our email address. Let's take a look at the markup of the subscribe component. If we take a look at the markup of this component, you will see that I'm using a data attribute called data test with a value of email input on line number 40. At Cypress, we recommend you use data attributes that are specific to testing only. 
as using classes or IDs makes your tests more brittle because classes and IDs often change over time. Now we are getting the input element and typing in the email address, tom at example.com. Next, we need to get the submit button and click on it. We then want to make an insertion that the success message from our API endpoint is displayed and also contains the email address of our user. Now let's run our test and see what happens. It looks like the post request to our API endpoint returned a 404. As a result of this, Cypress is unable to get the success message, which should have been returned from the server. Let's discuss why we are getting this 404 and see how we can fix it. Okay, I just wanted to quickly jump in here to discuss why we're getting this 404 error. This is very similar to what we were experiencing earlier with our component not having access to our style sheets so that we had to import our uh, CSS file from our app into Cypress. And the reason why we had to do that again is because Cypress is running our component in isolation from our application. So that means that this component does not have access to our Next.js API endpoint. Now the way we can get around this and we can get our test to pass is by using the intercept command, which we can then mock the API's response. So let's update our test using the intercept command and get our test to pass. I have gone ahead and updated our test to use the intercept command. Let's now break down exactly what is going on and how it works. The first argument we need to pass into the intercept command is the type of request, which in this case is a post request. Next, we need to pass in the path of our endpoint, which is forward slash API slash subscribe. Finally, we can pass in an object, which we can use to mock the response body from our endpoint. This is how we can mock the success message, which would normally come back from the R API once a user has subscribed successfully. We are also going to create an alias for our intercept and call it email subscribe. We will then wait on our alias on line 21. This will ensure that the post request has completed before Cypress runs our assertion. Now let's run this test again and see what happens. Great, our test is now passing because we have successfully mocked the success message, which would normally be coming from our subscribe endpoint. Before we continue writing more tests, let's see how we can clean up and refactor this test using a custom Cypress command. You may have already noticed that by using these data test attributes, our get selectors become quite verbose. While there's nothing inherently wrong with this, we can use a custom Cypress command to make our tests easier to read and write. If I open up my commands file under Cypress support commands.js, you'll see that I have a custom command called getbySelect. This custom command will allow us to use only the value of any data test attribute and makes getting elements much easier. I'm now going to refactor our test using this custom command and you'll see what I mean. Now that I've refactored our test using this custom command, let's rerun our test to make sure it is still passing. Great, our test is still passing. By using this custom command, our test has been cleaned up considerably and is much easier to read and write in my opinion. Now let's write a test that asserts that our component will throw an error if an already subscribed user tries to subscribe again. I've already gone ahead and written out this test which asserts that a user cannot subscribe to our newsletter if they have already subscribed. This is virtually identical to our other test, only the email we are using is different and instead of a success message, we are expecting an error to be returned from our API. Let's run this test and see what happens. Just like in our previous test, our component is unable to hit our API endpoint and is throwing a 404. Let's update our test to use the intercept command and mock out the error message we should expect from our API. Now let's rerun our test. Now that our test is passing, let's rerun all of our tests to make sure they are green and passing. Great, all of our tests are passing and now we have more confidence that our component is working the way we intended it to. Hey friends, so that's it for this video. I hope after watching this, you've gained more confidence about writing component tests with Cypress. Now, I've only begun to scratch the surface here of all that's possible. So if you want more information, please go to our docs. We've written several guides with detailed instructions on how to use various frameworks and tools in both Vue and React, and we've got Angular support on the way. So until next time, friends, cheers.